Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we're here to uh, unbox a 1.5 water, and then later we'll uh, I'll have a 1.5 air. That way you can see exactly what comes in the packages, and you can uh, um, kind of anticipate what you're going to receive. So let's uh, let's uh, jump into it. All right. So what I have here is a uh, 1.5. Um, Kilowatt water cooled um, spindle kit from Pwn CNC. Uh, let's see, the contents of the package are let's see, we've got our uh, printed color, full color printed manual. We have the spindle cable with the water cooled version. We've got some cable or some uh, tubing, this is 16 foot of orange and 16 foot of red. Um, tubing for the coolant um, going to the motor. Um, in here, let's see, we've got the Pwn CNC uh, tumbler that comes with your uh, with your with your CNC or with your <laughs> with your uh, with your spindle kit. We have a uh, simple submergible um, pump, a water pump or coolant pump that will come with your uh, water cooled version. We'll stick that over here with. Tubing inside of your package. Additionally, we've got the actual motor itself, as well as the VFD. And let's see, let's, let me set this aside. Next, we have uh, let's see, a little accessories box here, which has the power cable, bag of Skittles. Since this is an ER11 spindle, we have got um, a 1 16th, a 1 8th, and a 1 quarter uh, collet that comes with it. We've got the Pwn CNC spindle nut. And then lastly, we have a, uh, for the nut, we have got a 17 millimeter hex wrench. This is a really thick 5 millimeter uh, thick uh, steel. Um, should be real strong and secure for uh, Handling that, it is a short handle, so it's nice and convenient as well. Um, then, of course, we've got a 13 millimeter, since this is the ER11, it's got the smaller shaft. So this one, the uh, 13 millimeter will uh, hold onto the shaft. The 17 will hold onto the nut and allow you to do your uh, um, bit changes. So yeah, let's, uh, let's open up a couple of things so you can see a little bit further. Set these aside. So we'll start with the motor. Let's see, on one side, oh, yep, it is this side. So if you just follow along, follow along the edge here, it should open right up. And, uh, looks like I've got it coming around. There it goes. So inside of here, be well packaged. This is the water-cooled version, so it has the tubes, the additional tubes coming out the top. And you'll notice you can verify, uh, just take a towel or something to wipe that down. Make sure you wipe off all the, uh, the gunk on the end, or the, uh, the lubricant on the end, because when they start spinning, it'll just mess everything up, uh, create a big mess for you. Of course, this is the water cooled, so we've got our water cooled uh, pins here. This is where the tubes would actually go into the top. Um, it doesn't matter. They're both, it's just a big chamber in there. So wherever the water comes in or the coolant comes in, it will go out the other one. So it doesn't matter which one is which. We've got our aircraft connector here. This is an H17 connector. Um, on the end, uh, this is the uh, ER11, so the spindle and the uh, um, the nut and the, actually, and the collet. Here, let me just uh, go ahead and open that up. Come on, open up. <laughs> there it goes. So, we have a pretty cool... Oh, I guess my fingers work. It's a little cold outside. <laughs> Let's see. So, um, we've got a nice silver uh, spindle nut on there. And then, of course, here, let's grab our quarter inch collet, open that up, mm -hmm. 
There we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your collet um, and then take your nut here and just kind of press them together and they will kind of snap into place. And that lets you know that it's actually snapped and hold on, uh, held on to the collet. And the collet should not fall out inside of the nut. This is why a lot of people will order um, extra nuts is so that they can use their additional collets or even preload up a bunch of, uh, put the bit in there, just kind of let it sit, sit it to the side, wait until the bit chain comes along and then they just unscrew one, screw the next one on. So you might want to get some extras. I've got extras um, of the nuts, uh, the standard nuts. I will have these uh, branded silver nuts on there eventually um, on the website, so look for that soon. But just tighten that up and then you can take the two wrenches Come on off there. There we go. Got one. And got the other here. So this is the 17 and the 13. The 13 um, holds on to the, uh, the uh, shaft there. The 17 holds on to the nut, as I mentioned before. And you're basically going to turn it until it's tight um, once you've got your bit in there. And yeah, you've got the, uh, in this case, this is the 1.5 again. The only difference between this and the 1.8, or I'm sorry, the 0 0.8 kilowatt motor is basically going to be the one, the size, two, the weight, and three, the actual labeling on the thing. I believe the 7 watt, I believe, or 0.8 kilowatt motor, I believe is 7 amps or 8 amps. I've got to, I'd have to look it up to remember. Uh, but in this case, this is the uh, 1.5, so it's 12 amps. And it's perfectly matched with our spindle there. So let's do a quick change over and let's take a look at our spindle. There. Oh, I'm sorry, at our, at our VFD. <laughs> so in the VFD, what you've got is a big padding. You've got the VFD's manual itself in here has all of the details on how to program it and all that stuff, which these VFDs do come pre-programmed. All you've got to do is just wire it right up and it will work uh, right out of the box with this motor um, and the cables and all that. So we'll pull the VFD out. Um, there's some a screw and some silicon gel in there. Obviously you don't eat that. Um, so here we have our VFD with the removable faceplate that's extendable by a simple Cat5 cable. Plug it right in there. Um, the VFD mounts in a couple of ways. You can either put a DIN, um, mount it up onto a DIN line and just pull this down and it uh, loosens it and allows you to clap it right into place. Or there is a couple of screws, one up here and one down here so you can secure it into place. So the next most prominent thing would be of course the inside of the VFD. And in here, I've actually labeled it. This uh, VFD has already been programmed for a 1.5 12 amp 110 motor, which is what this is, and will be in your kit, um, as well as the actual wiring for wiring up the power cable, which of course you can see here. Um, yeah, well, let me angle this so you can see it a little better. But we've got our L1 here. Um, that's where the black line of our power cable goes into. Here's the L2, that's one right there. That goes in the white cable right here. And then of course the ground cable. Um, press that in, but hold on to it in just a moment because you'll be uh, pressing the spindle cable, um, the its ground into there. So both grounds will go into that same ground line right here. Let's switch, uh, switch the cables and open up the spindle cable here. So on the spindle cable, do this. So let's see if I can do this in one hand. There we go. So we've got a uh, a ground cable, which actually is two cables in one. One is the ground cable that goes all the way over to the spindle and grounds the spindle, which has an internally grounded um, ground line there. But the other cable, the other cable goes, actually attaches to the drain line of the actual cable itself. That's the outer metal coating underneath. So 
The cable is basically made up of the braiding. Then we've got a rubbery coating on the outside of that. Then we have a metal coating. Then we have each individual conductor that's been wrapped in paper. Um, so these uh, are, I think it's paper. Um, I believe it is paper. It's been a while since I've cut these up. I've actually had someone else making these for me. <laughs> uh, shout out to Aaron. He's a really good guy. But um, these cables, uh, this, so this is uh, grounded. Uh, the shield is, or the drain has been grounded. The actual router, or the spindle has been grounded. And all of that goes into the ground line along with the power cable. And that gets tightened down over here on these three on, the, on, the, on your left. Am I right? <laughs> so the other lines here are the UVW. That's where the red, black, and white come in. And they'll come in, U goes into red. Um, your, your spindle cable may be um, wired um, slightly differently where whenever I plugged it into the motor, it actually turned in the wrong direction. So what I do, whenever I put these together, I take all of the motors together after they've been pre-programmed plug everything up before it goes into your package. So this is, this is unique to your kit. So when we're talking about your specific kit, I bring all the pieces together, plug it all together, and then test it out to make sure the motor goes in the right direction, make sure it ramps up to speed, um, and a couple of other tests um, that is hard to detail on camera on a short video like this. But um, the Either the U or the red or the black lines may be switched on yours. I know it's listed in the manual that way, but whatever is listed on this sticker matches your kit. No matter what documentation you see, this is what matters because this is the final test. This is how it was tested finally whenever it was packaged up and labeled for you. So in this case, the red line um, will go and uh, in, into the U, the black wire, goes into the V, and the W wire um, goes into the W. So once you got all that tightened down, um, you can put this into place, and it's all ready to go. Now, one minor note. There are a couple of extra lines up here. These are these small uh, terminals here. We've got two right here on uh, my right, your left, um, which is SG negative and SG positive. Both of these are your um, Modbus, your RS-485 connection. Um, I know most um, Onefinities will probably use it, but it's pretty rare um, if somebody's actually using that. Most people will actually use, and it's really hard to see on camera, um, and maybe I'll get a, a close-up picture. I'll edit in a picture of, of the terminal here, but one of the lines is a VF1, and the other line is a GND. Both of these will be utilized for the PWN um, control of your spindle. This is what most CNC machines at our hobby level use. Um, the Shapokos, the um, carbon, or the uh, new carbs, um, the, uh, the Millwrights probably use it. I'm, I'm going to delve into that one yet. I believe that is still correct. Um, even the Onefinity actually uses the PWN if you want it. You've actually got uh, two choices because of that Build Botox, uh, um, Onefinity version of the Build Botox controller. But, yeah, so we'll uh, look into uh, hooking all this up um, in a later video. But, yeah, I hope you uh, like what you see. Go ahead and order it. I'll post some links. Um, and, yeah, but just remember... Don't, um, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.